What's up, everybody? This is Whiskey in the Six. I'm Rob. Doing two Springbank 12 year old cast strength Burgundy casks. So, both of these have spent their entire life, all 12 years, in a first fill Burgundy barrel. The only difference between the two is this one was mass produced with 10,000 and with 10,260 uh, bottles. This one here is one of only 252 bottles, so it's a single cask. Um, with only 252 bottles at 12 years old, you can tell it's a smaller cask. Just based on color alone, so the single cask is the unmarked glass. The cast strength version is the glass with a little bit of markings on them. So color wise, the single cask wins. That's the single cask on the left hand side. Uh, it's a couple shades darker than the cask strength. All right, we're gonna nose, taste, give it a mark. Uh, and then I'm gonna tell you a little bit about why these are so special. This bottle actually was sent to me by a guy named Josh. I mentioned it before on the channel. I've mentioned these bottles before on the channel. This one was getting a little bit uh, low, so I figured I should do the review soon. I wasn't planning on doing it this year. I was hoping to do it in January, but um, I'm enjoying it a little too much, so I had to. I have a backup bottle of this, and since there's only 10,260 bottles, I'm very happy about that, but I wish I had a backup bottle of this one because it is incredible. Anyway, I digress. On the nose with the regular cast strength. So after quite some time open, as you can see, I'm about halfway down the bottle. It has improved drastically on the nose. Getting a lot more of that burgundy. You still get a little bit of that spring bank funk that everybody loves with, if they love spring bank. I find that spring bank funk is best when it's a cast strength spring bank. But it's not as peated as some of the other spring banks that I've had. For example, the regular 12 year old cast strength is a lot more peated in my opinion than this one. Very sweet, some strawberries there. And then again, a little bit of that nice malty uh, peated funk, but not as peated as I uh, was hoping for in this one. On the single cask, the nose is just out of this world. Again, it's not as peated as your Springbank 12 year old uh, regular one, regular cast strength, but with this one you get oatmeal, a touch of peat, definitely got that Springbank funk in here as well. This one could have easily been a long grow uh, red if it was a little bit more peated. But honestly, this is one of the best, if not the best spring banks I've ever had. And I've had quite a few. I've had a whole bunch of long grows. I've had a whole bunch of spring banks. This one's epic. Man, just like every dark fruit you can think of, every berry, every cooked down like jam, both of these are 12 years old. Um, this one was bottled in 2016 and barreled in 2003. So November 2003, uh, it was barreled, bottled in May 2016. And then this one was uh, distilled in December of 2004 and bottled September 2017. So it's almost 13 years old, this one which is kind of cool. If I had to grade the nose on these two, this one would probably be an eight out of 10. That would be a 10 out of 10. It's awesome. Okay, on the palette. So this has opened up a lot. It's not as hot as it was when I first uh, opened it, but it still has some heat to it. 
So this one's best enjoyed with a little bit of water. But before I add water, you don't get much of that spring bank funk. You do have a little bit of it, not what you're used to with a regular spring bank funk. Considering this is all first fill burgundy casks, you would expect a lot more wine influence. Um, I'm not sure why I'm not getting a ton. There is a, there is burgundy influence, but when I switch over to that single cask, you'll see what I mean by, um, I mean, that one is just epic. Okay, a little bit of water. This one calms right down. You get a little bit more of that spring bank characteristic, that distillery characteristic. Um, there's still some sweetness from the wine cask coming through, but if someone told me that this was just finished in burgundy barrels, I would believe them because you don't get as much burgundy as you would expect from first fill burgundy barrels um, with that allotment of, of barrels used. Uh, my math, I'm not even going to attempt to guess how many barrels they use, but they use quite a few to get 10,000 bottles. So. Um, if it's the same ratio as this single cask, they used a whole bunch. Because like I said, this is 10,000 bottles. This is 250 from one cask. Really nice, good stuff. So again, with water, this improves drastically. Um, much, much better. Much more of that spring band characteristic. There is a little bit of that wine cask, like I said, just not a whole bunch. Um, it's really nice. I would opt for the regular spring bank cast strength as opposed to the burgundy barrels if I were comparing the two um, with this expression in particular. Collectability wise, that's another story altogether. All of these spring banks have secondary value. Uh, in the UK, they just fly off the shelf. So you can literally get a brand new release and it'll be worth more than what you paid for in a couple of weeks. Um, so this one hasn't increased in price too, too much, but it cost me a Glendronic 18 year old to pick it up. So really nice. If I had to mark that one, that's probably an 87, I would say. Um, really nice stuff, but, and if I had this closer to the beginning of the year, that mark might be a little bit higher, but because I've had so many epic whiskeys this year, that's probably an 87. On the palette, the single cask, I mean, just look at that color. You can tell there's so much bur burgundy influence on this. This one's 57.5%. But honestly, drinks like it's 48%, 49%. It's delicious. It's got this incredible viscosity to it. I really wish I can acquire another bottle of this. I don't think it's possible. Um, so thankful to Josh for sending this, sending this to me. Man, this is so good. So you definitely get a lot of that Springbank distillery characteristic. And it's almost not fair. It's not fair, actually, to um, compare these two together. And the reason for that is, is Springbank intentionally chose one of the better casks to put as the single cask cast strength. The reason they do that is obviously it's going to be a little bit more expensive. Um, it's going to be a little bit harder to get. It's going to be a little bit more exclusive. Like I said, 252 bottles, first fill Burgundy, nearly 13 years old. I'm going to add water just to make this comparison fair, but it doesn't need it. Before I added water, I'm still tasting the, the dessert-like flavors, the dark fruits, the cooked down jammy type fruits, um, just incredible stuff. Fruit cake, uh, vanilla cookies, vanilla cream, um, get like strawberry jam and raspberry jam and like all kinds of just dark incredible stuff and you get like that musty peat that Springbank is known for and it's not long girl style so obviously you're not gonna get a ton of it but there's a little bit of it and then that oatmeal type flavor and maple syrup and uh, there's like a nuttiness to it maybe like walnuts or uh, pistachio something like that
And then water just actually magnifies how good this is. The viscosity is incredible. The finish is incredible. The fruit just explodes. It's all dessert, like cooked down fruits. It's not fresh fruit, which is kind of rare for such a young whiskey. I mean, 13 years is not young, young, but in the Scottish world, it's kind of young. cookies, pound cake, it's like that marbled chocolate and vanilla pound cake, that's honestly, that plus a little bit of peat drizzled with some maple syrup, <laughs> that's what that is right there. I kind of already had a really good idea of what I wanted my top six whiskeys of the year to be, but I cannot deny the quality of this. You're looking at a 90... 293 maybe um, I can't base it on a mark because I don't or base it on a price sorry because I don't know how much this cost it was a free bottle I'm forever in debt to Josh man uh, what a super cool guy I'm gonna be sending him something as a thank you for this because he uh, he did me a huge solid here with this bottle it's incredible stuff I will savor the last little bits of this bottle and probably not share it with anybody else um just so good yeah the nose is just drastically better the palate is just drastically better and like i said it's almost unfair to this one because this is quality whiskey it's just this one is supreme whiskey Not to knock this one that much, but um, man, that single cask is incredible. Which makes me want to seek out as many Springbank single casks as I possibly can. So that'll be my goal for 2019. All right, guys, check me out on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Um, I answer all the comments on all three of those forums. I'll also answer all your comments in this video. Uh, sometimes it takes me a little longer than others, but I get to them. Um, I uh, just want to thank you all for subscribing, for liking, and for just tuning in on a regular basis. Cheers.